play and call it work. Mini Wargaming Faction Focus! Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWargamer.com. Here with Josh. Welcome, Wargamers, to Faction Focus. We're doing Chaos Space Marines and we're focusing on. Her Heretic Astartes. Heretic Astartes. I gotta get used to saying it that way because it's kind of no longer called Chaos Space Marines. Even though they are Chaos Space Marines, they're called the Heretic Astartes. Which is kind of sweet, if you think about it. It's pretty cool. Uh, and this particular video is going to be split up into two portions. The first part, which you're watching right now, will be on YouTube. The second portion will be in the vault. It's a two-part review. So uh, make sure to click on the link below to watch the second portion of this review to watch the entire review. In addition to that, the other links in the video description below will be to the battle reports that we have filmed and dedicated to the faction focus for Chaos Space Marines or the Heretic Astartes. First game will be Chaos Space Marines versus... Astro Militarum. Astro Militarum against Josh. And the second game will be also Chaos Base Marines versus Admech. So uh, stay tuned for those two games. Uh, uh, one will be for free and one will be in the vault as well. So uh, lots of lots of coverage, lots of footage, and lots of games. And so let's dive right in here. Well, what we're going to do is we're going to go over each one. We're going to just pick it apart and show you all the new stuff that comes with it and explain how it fits in this new system of 40k and then we'll go on to the next one and the next and see how much we get done in the amount of time that we have we're not going to possibly cover everything for example the, uh, the chaos demons we're not going to be touching the chaos demons or the uh, the knights in this particular uh, review video we're just going to be focusing on the heretic astartes the chaos space marines so first things first, on page 10 of this book, which is the Index Chaos book, this is the, uh, the first book that has come out. I believe specific books will be coming out after the fact, and so... Um, yeah, we can only assume that we're going to see faction-specific books. That, that's kind of... Less generic ones. It, it's a, it's almost a certainty, right? Uh, I mean, they, that's, what, that's their pattern, that's what they've been doing for years and years, and so uh, we can look forward to that. But right now, this is what we have. We, Chaos Space Marines players, that's what we have. And so on, on page 10 of this book, you have the Heretic Astartes Army List, and things that can apply to any army that you configure within this book. So first things first, we've got to talk about keywords. At the bottom, and this is similar to Age of Sigmar for those of you who play Age of Sigmar as well, uh, each unit has keywords at the bottom which matter for certain benefits of rules that other units give other units, and according to which keyword you have, it, it'll benefit from it. So uh, that's something that we need to get used to. Another thing is Marks of Chaos. They are keywords only, and they aren't actually specific things like they were before. So yeah, they're currently, you're, you're getting no direct benefit from having a certain Mark of Chaos. Like there's no more, uh, you know, plus one toughness for Mark of Nurgle, for example. That does not exist anymore. Uh, the uh, Mark of Nurgle, what that does is just means that you have the Mark of Nurgle on your unit and you can benefit from other units that are Mark of Nurgle. And everything has a mark now, even vehicles. Uh, Daffy, he's able to have a Mark of Chaos. Uh, it could even be Chaos Undivided. Like, it's got to be something. Um, but it is a Mark of Chaos. Um, so, uh, in addition to that, there are uh, abilities that you can get in one of the... Uh, the main ability is Death to the False Emperor, which is pretty sweet. So what that is, is when you're fighting units of the Imperium in, uh, in the fight phase, if you roll a six, you gain an extra attack. Uh, those rolls, if they, you get six on those, they don't give you further attacks, you just get extra attacks. Yeah, so a six up to hit with any of that stuff will give you an extra attack against anything with the Imperium keyword. That's correct, yeah. That, uh, yeah. There comes the key, uh, keywords again, which again is something that I gotta get used to, but it is what it is now. So. Um, that's pretty sweet. That's if you're fighting the, the Imperium and uh, for units that are close combat heavy, uh, such as Corn Berserkers, which we'll go over probably in this video, or maybe in this video, maybe in the next one. Very good. It's a very good thing. Another thing too is the Chaos Icons. You still have icons that you can bring, which we'll go over right now. Icon of Wrath, Corn units only. Mm -hmm. And you can reroll charge rolls for uh, units that are carrying that Icon of Wrath. Now, it doesn't say fail charges, it just says reroll. Reroll charge, charge rolls. So if you roll a three, and you technically could get everything in, but it, you know you probably get more in if you roll higher, then you can reroll it because you can reroll charge rolls. Right, so it's one of those, you know, you need to make your one inch charge to make it into combat, but you'd rather 
charge further than that, go ahead. Yeah, exactly. Which is it's it's very useful because it just blanket fixes every sort of situation like that, which is nice. Uh, Icon of Flame, which is Zinch units only. This one I wouldn't. Uh, it's not as sure thing as the corn one. With the corn, you can kind of use it all the time, right? With this one, it says at the start of your psychic phase, roll a d6. For each unit with an icon of flame on the roll of a six, you inflict one mortal wound on the closest enemy unit within 12 inches of the model carrying the icon of flame. So you have to roll a six for it to work. So there's a one in six chance that it won't. And you have to be close enough to an enemy unit for it to even work. Uh, now, mortal wounds are sweet because they ignore armor. And invuln. And invuln saves. So that's kind of nice. But the chances of that happening are much less than reroll fail charge. So uh, it's still cool to bring, still nice to bring. If you're playing a game where points don't matter, where you're doing... Uh, you're going to bring it anyways. Yeah, you're playing power level and you get to bring the free upgrades, essentially. Yeah, which is really nice. I really love that, how you can look at your, your units, you can see what uh, war gear they can bring, what upgrades they can bring, and you don't have to worry about... You know, it's the same power, regardless of what you bring on them. Then, yeah, bring an Icon of Flame if you're bringing Zinch. Absolutely. Don't not do it. Mm -hmm. Uh, but don't don't think that it, it can sway the game so much in your favor that it's a, one of those things that you must bring, such as the Icon of Wrath, which I would argue is, and again, I'm, I'm definitely more corn than I am anything else, but well, even still, it's sure thing. It'll benefit you every time. Right, it's a more useful ability. Yeah, it's more, uh, it's more, there's more function. Icon of Despair now, Nurgle units only, enemies that are within three inches of units with the Icon, must subtract one from their leadership, which is actually kind of a big deal. Um, it doesn't always come into play because you have to be within three inches, but the way leadership and morale works now, right. it is a big deal. Well, I mean, it, when you're facing off against a horde-type army where losing one extra model might not be a big deal, who cares? But when you're, when you're playing against something that has expensive models, losing one extra model can be kind of a big deal. Yeah, so. exactly. So that that's pretty good. That's not too bad. Uh, icon of Excess, Slanesh units only. If the unit has Icon of Excess, its Death to the False Emperor ability takes effect on the roll of a 5 rather than a 6. Like on a 5 plus rather than a 6 plus. So you get extra attacks on 5s or 6s. I like that. That's pretty good. Which is good. So 1 in 3 chance when you're attacking, you'll get more attacks, which is really good. Which kind of offsets the fact that you no longer get a plus 1 initiative because initiative is no longer a thing anymore. Right. It, it's, it gives you more attacks, which kind of is what happened before anyway. You would get to attack first, if you're fighting Marines. True. So, nice. That's something that will come into play when you are fighting armies of the Imperium. When you're not, then it doesn't matter so much. Last one is Icon of Vengeance. Cannot be taken by Korn, Zinch, Nurgle, or Slanesh. So, your, your keywords, it has to not be one of those four. It has to just be Mark of Chaos not dedicated to a specific god. You add one to the leadership of all models in the unit, which is kind of a big deal, again, because we already said that, you know, if you subtract a unit, especially if it's a stronger unit, like a, like a like Terminator unit, you know, having an extra leadership is a big deal. Heck, anything, really, in Chaos Space Marines, with the exception of maybe cultists, you kind of want to have higher leadership because it just helps you. So it's almost always going to be universally beneficial. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty good. That, that actually got a lot better than before. Before, it made it so you were fearless, mm -hmm. which is good, but not so good in some situations. Like, if you're stuck in combat with a Dreadnought, then it's just, oh, that sucks, we're just going to die, right? But now it's more universally useful. So, uh, really quick, we're going to go on to the Dark Hereticus Discipline, so the Psychic. First off, Psychic is, in my humble opinion, okay. much better, because it doesn't take an hour for the phase and I've always been not psyker I've always been and, and until Zeech until a thousand suns came out I, I really did not like playing psychic anything but then thousand suns came out and you kind of got to go psychic so you have to embrace the psychic so I was like okay I'm gonna just build a psychic army and then the majority of my turn is the psychic phase and so that was that was fine but before that I never liked doing it because it just felt like it bogged down the game in all of my 7th edition battle reports, I don't... I'm trying to think now. I don't think I ever took a single Psyker. Really? Ever, not once. Okay. And yeah. even in, like, like I look at my 30k games, I don't think I've ever brought a Psyker uh, 
in 40k or 30k ever. That's a big deal. That's yeah. a big deal. And why, why is that though? Because uh, it just slowed everything down. That's and the exact reason why the I didn't like it. Was to do. Kind of, it was more bookkeeping that I didn't want to do. Yeah. And so now that they've simplified it and they've made it so it, it doesn't take a long time, first off. And another one, it, it's it, it's much easier to keep track of because there isn't uh, there isn't 50 psychic abilities that you're trying to remember. Right. There was a ton of different psychic abilities and you had like three books and two FAQs out to try to figure out how to do yeah. them right. There's just too much. Too much bookkeeping, right? But now... There's everyone defaults to knowing Smite, which is which is easy to that, remember. That brings me back. That's third edition for me. Yeah, where everybody, every psyker was just Smite. Every librarian, uh, you could Smite. Yep, yep. So and now uh, there is a Dark Hereticus discipline. There's one of three possible things you could roll for them, or you could choose them. So that's nice as well. You can choose the psychic abilities. Right. It's not a you know, you, you kind of give it according to what is most suitable to your army, whether it's narrative play that you're doing or whether it's match play, no matter what it is. I like doing the Infernal Gaze because what that does is it makes it so enemy unit within 18 inches, you roll three dice. It, it's a it's a warp charge value of five first off. So you Which need, is pretty easy. You need to make that on two dice. So that is to pretty easy. To get five easy. or higher on two dice, yeah, more than likely it's going to work. And then, uh, then after that you roll three dice and any four pluses that enemy unit takes mortal wounds. So that's very useful. That's that's good. I like that. Uh, it, it seems to be... Uh, it, it, the chances of you getting mortal wounds on a unit are pretty good every time. Yeah, you're going to get one and a half mortal wounds on average onto a unit, so... Yeah. yeah, yeah. That, that, that's simple, it's nice, it's not overpowered. Right, yeah, and there isn't a whole lot to think about. Uh, perils, of the, or perils, or perils of the Warp is easier. It's on double ones or sixes, yep. which is kind of neat. That goes back. That brings my mind back to fourth edition. I think it was fourth or fifth. Fourth or edition. fifth, yeah. yeah. It, and that was kind of nice, even though it's very devastating when it happens now. It's pretty bad. It's uh, what what happens again? Well, I you think you're losing just, the model, and then there's chance to do damage around you. It's something very bad. Yeah, I can't remember at the top of my head because again. I'm going to use more psychers than I used to, but I still haven't used psychers or looked into them a ton yet. Yeah. Yeah. All I know is that it's... But the chances of it happening are, are slim. Unless you're quirk rolling, and then you get double ones a lot. But uh, he, he playing Nork, so he's not going to be bringing a ton of psychers. So it's all good. Uh, now, Prescience is actually pretty sweet because uh, it's Warp Charge 7, which it should be. And what you do is uh, uh, any unit within 18 inches of you, any friendly unit, you can add one to all hit rolls made for that unit to the start of your next psychic phase. That's pretty good. That's huge. It's a big deal, right? That makes it so your dudes typically are hitting on twos now. Right. And uh, depending Death and on Fall Semper is going to happen more often. Much more often. Right. Yeah, especially with Slanesh units, if you bring Slanesh units. So I would cer certainly recommend bringing a Psyker, giving them prescience, and casting that on units that are in close combat. Mm hmm. Yeah. So that would be well worth it. That's the third one. The second one is Warp Time, which actually brings me back to 5th edition, where Warp Time was a thing. They've brought it back. They've worded it differently, and it does something slightly different. So basically, what you do is you choose a friendly unit within 3 inches, and that unit makes a movement phase, just like it was the movement phase. So that's nuts. That is. Uh, it's, that makes it so it's first turn charges. That makes it so it's... Uh, Grabbing objectives, all that kind of stuff. All that. One well, thing, and you can throw yeah. that on to like you've got a demon prince who's a psyker. Yep. And use that on himself, and all of a sudden, you know, he's zipping up the board. Yeah, because he's already moving twelve. Yeah. Yeah. So he's gonna do a twenty-four inch move and then be able to charge. Yeah. That'll work. Yeah. So that is a really, really good one. That's a warp charge six. So. More often than not. More often than not, you should get it, and very good. And that's it. That's what the psychic is in in uh, in chaos. Going on to Abaddon the Despoiler. Now we got to talk about Abaddon because he is, uh, as many like to call him, Felbadon. But uh, is he so Felbadon right now? Uh, forgetting the lore, looking at his numbers. <laughs> uh, I I like to look. At, I hadn't actually filled in him yet. In the three battle reports that I've done with Chaos Space Marines. I decided to try to get a better feel for the army before I fielded Abaddon because I wanted to bring him 
and have a better idea of what I was doing. And so now that I have a better idea of what I'm doing, I'm excited to field him because the stuff that he does is pretty sweet. Now the names of his abilities are all the same, but they just do different things. First off, he's 13 power, and he his talent of horse is both a shooting and a close combat weapon, which is nice. Shooting is rapid fire too. Now, the nice thing about rapid fire is that you just get double the shots in half range. Half range. And the fact that it says rapid fire too means that he's firing four shots in half, half range. Yep. Yeah. So that's nice. Uh, his talent horse though does D3 damage, which is uh, uh, better than your average combi bolter because that's what he had before. Right. You just have the regular. It's still strength four, but it's AP minus one. Which it's is AP nice. minus one, which is better than a than a bolter. And then the damage D3 is is nice, especially when you're uh, rapid firing it. Drachnian is a it's a melee weapon. Strength plus one, minus three to the AP, so better in that respect. And then D3 damage as well. And then this is what it also says. You said you roll a D6 each time uh, Abaddon fights. On a one, he suffers a mortal wound, cannot use the weapon. So it's mimicking a, uh, like a, your, your demon weapon from, mm -hmm. from before, so that's what it does. Um, and he can't use the weapon further for this fight phase. On a two plus, he can make that many additional attacks with the weapon. So roll a d6, you get that many extra. So it's kind of the exact same. It, it, it's a, only you can't make an inbound save against it. Uh, so you just suffered a mortal wound on a roll of a one. So right. don't roll a one. Uh, now onto the Talon of Horus, which is disputably better uh, in close combat than Drachnian. With Drachnian, you may get the extra attacks. But with the Talon of Horus, you get strength times two. Minus AP, AP3, which is the same as the Drachnian, and then D3 damage, which is the same. So it's up to you. Either way, you're hitting in close combat on a 2, and you could possibly be wounding on a 2 if you use the Talon Horse. And uh, you might get less attacks. But he's got 6 attack space, so that's not too bad. I guess you got to consider what you're fighting against. Right. And if he, he's the one charging in the combat, you know that he'll attack first, so it's good. It's really good. Death of the False Emperor, he has that special rule. Dark Destiny. He has a 4-up inbound save. And in addition to this, any all damage suffered by Abaddon is halved, rounding up. So that makes him a lot more resilient. That is a big a deal. Well, and he's 7 wounds based he is, there. So, yeah. I mean, your average character is rolling, what, about 5? Some of the tough ones are 6. Yep. So seven's pretty good in half damage, yep. Yep. And, and half damage is definitely a lot more resilient, which, in effect, makes it so when you're shooting him with weapons that are like D3 damage and, and whatever, it's so much less effective. Quite a bit less effective. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're still able to kind of hide him close to a unit. I'm thinking in close combat, his capability, you know, he wants to go fight a knight that their chain swords are doing six damage. Well, they're doing three against him. Yep. So you can go toe to toe with quite a bit in close combat. Yeah. Yeah, that's a big deal. Another one is uh, uh, Lord of the Black Legion. You can reroll failed hit rolls if it's a friendly Black Legion unit. They're within six inches of him. Now, I find that a lot of characters have that specific to a certain group of people. For right. him, it's Black Legion. He helps Black Legion reroll their hit rolls. Well, a lot of them too. Like if they're more minor characters, it's rerolling ones. Once he's just rerolling everything. Everything. And since he's always within six inches of himself. Yep. He hits on twos re-rolling. He does. So. Yeah. So that's... Ugh. Yeah. And that just says uh, any failed hit rolls. So that's close combat. Or, or shooting. Or shooting. Which is big. Which is awesome. Because before, he had preferred enemy space brings. That was his warlord trait. And so that was ones hitting and wounds, right? Yeah. So now it's everything against all armies. Not everything. It's uh, hit rolls. Failed hit rolls. Hit rolls against all armies. So... I would say that's better. I would disputably say that's better. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark of Chaos Ascendant, he ha um, automatically, or actually a friendly Heretic Astartes units automatically pass morale tests when they are within 12 inches of Abaddon. That is a big deal because when you fail uh, a morale test, you have to take additional guys out of your units. If you're within 12 inches of him, then... You just don't have to worry about it. You don't. And that's friendly Heretic Astartes units. Yep. So that's like... The same as saying Chaos Space Marine units that have just like army wide, which is pretty sweet. Teleport Strike, so you're able to place them in 
deep strike reserve, although it's not con called that anymore. Uh, and during deployment at the end of the movement phase, you can actually place him nine inches away from an enemy unit, which means he could possibly have a first turn charge, which is sweet. So I'm thinking you couple that with a psyker that's able to move him up an additional movement where he moves six inches because you're a little bit more than nine inches away, right? So yep. you move yep. an additional six because you normally wouldn't be able to move because that is your move. You'd move at the end of the movement phase. Then you're three inches away. Then the chances of you making a successful charge is that much greater. So getting him to combat right away is certainly something that you want to do because he is a close combat beast. And that's Abaddon. That's how I feel about Abaddon. What are your thoughts on Abaddon? Strong character. Really high power. I mean, he's expensive. Yes, 13 so, power is pretty expensive. But depending on the power level you're playing at... Like, if you're playing 50, which is approximately equivalent to 1,000 points, yeah. then... That, that's a lot. He's a lot. He's so you gotta, build, you gotta build the army specifically around him, but you go up to 100 power rating and all of a sudden... Yeah, you can bring some other stuff with him. Approximately 2,000 points. Yeah, approximately, yeah. Not exact, but... And now I'm talking about like an equivalent to the old, to 7th edition, that's what it would be. What it is in the new, I'm not sure yet because I haven't delved into points yet. Yep. Jumping ahead to a Chaos Lord. He is uh, defaults to a uh, power of 5, which is significantly less than Abaddon. Abaddon's 13. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, the Chaos Lord is still good. Uh, so let's uh, consider what we would do if we were to bring him. His save is 3+, plus, so a little bit less than Abaddon. He does have a Sigil of Corruption, which gives him a 4-up advanced save. Which is good, yep. Yeah, not bad. Lord of Chaos. He can reroll hit rolls of 1, made for friendly Legion units within 6 inches of the model. So just pick a Legion that's the same Legion as your Chaos Lord. You can help them. But that's only rolls of 1, though. For right. Abaddon, it was all hit rolls. So not quite as good, but still not bad. Jump Pack Assault. This is the same thing as... Abaddon's teleport strike, only if this Chaos Lord is equipped with a jump pack. But you gotta add one more power to him, making him power six. So at the end of the movement phase, you place him nine inches away from an enemy unit, and then you can do that. That's a legal move. And then he can take weapons from the melee combat list or the combi weapons list. And so kind of like the same before, and he has the death to the false emperor special rule. So extra attacks on hit rolls of six in close combat, or in the fight, some in the fight phase is what it's called now. Right. Uh, so not bad. He's it, he kind of seems like he's your garden variety leader of your army that you would want to bring, but still not too bad. He does come with a chain sword, bolt pistol, frag, and crack grenades. Chain sword is a little bit different right now in that uh, the damage is one, and you can make an additional attack with the weapon if it is equipped. So he's defaulted to close combat or attacks of four, so he he would have five. In that okay. chain sword. I could see most people I think are going to upgrade him to have some kind of power weapon or something. Definitely some sort of power weapon, especially considering if it's free. Like, free. Well, if you're doing the power level thing, if yeah. You're doing power and levels, even if you're yeah. not for points, you're probably going to give him something. Yeah, you want to give him something other than that because uh, he's got no AP, and you want to give him some sort of AP with that. I would definitely consider slash recommend putting a jump pack on him. There's really no reason not to, because he can still, like, he's never a part of a unit, so that doesn't matter, right? He can't be attached right. to a unit, so, and you know that because he's less than 10 wounds, you can't target him out, the enemy can't target him to shoot at him, so you just put him behind. Unless he's the closest, then yeah. Unless he's the closest, right, you got to put him behind another unit. So that's fine, so I would always put a jump pack on him, especially if it's only one more power, and you get your teleport strike. I think that's kind of a, I, I don't know if there's a situation that I would want to not put a jump pack on him. Can't think of any. Unless I put him in a rhino, which is a different situation altogether, because rhinos, when they blow up or when they get wrecked, you roll a die for each guy inside, and on the roll of one, that model's removed. Well, you still get to pick. You roll a die. You do every, pick, yeah. but still, in the event where he's the only guy in there, which is, I guess would be rare, but yeah. yeah. Uh, don't don't put your kid. Uh, well, here's actually that's a question, right? Okay. Because you roll. Let's say he and other guys are in the unit or are in the rhino, yep. right? You roll, you get a one for him. 
He's a different unit than the other guys. Uh, so what would happen in that case? I think I'd have to read the transport rules again, but I think you just roll for every model that's in the transport. Okay, well, let's hope roll so. Roll a die for every model in the transport, and you get to pick which ones, actually. If that's the case, then that's fine. Are killed. Yeah, but if it's like per unit, then that would suck. I don't think they do it that way. Probably not, because it sounds like it would bog it down. But uh, if you guys know, maybe you can leave comments in the uh, comments below, but... Either way, if I had to choose between Rhino or Jump Pack, I would choose Jump Pack because you get the movement, plus you get the ability to Jump Pack Assault. And you get the fly keyword too, so that means that you're charging flying stuff. That's true, and you can assault like flyers. Things that yeah we that like, we would know as flyers. So like a Storm Talon. Yeah, you or, get you know one of those gunships flying around that normally can't be assaulted by something without the fly keyword. And yeah, I'll just send your Chaos Lord and makes it more versatile. A lot more versatile. Yeah, and his movement's a big deal. And I've, in the games that I've played, any units that I've had with jump packs, they've been a lot better. Right. Yeah, they've been a lot more maneuverable, and rightfully so, and uh, obviously so. That's kind of how it is anyway. But I just found that it's even just that much more better. It's more better. It's more better? Yeah. Much more better? Much more better. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, and Terminator armor, that's, uh, that's not too bad. It's an extra couple... Power for that, he's uh, power seven. Obviously he gets a better save with that. His movement's five though, instead of six. So he moves a little bit slower. And his... You get an extra wound though. You do get an extra wound. I'm just noticing that. Yeah, that, so that's not too bad. Your your defaulted weapons are a combi bolter and power sword. So even if you put nothing extra on them, it's not too bad. But I would almost always want to put some sort of heavy power weapon on these guys because you're hitting on twos where you don't like the power sword well he, he, consider this right okay power fist yep you're hitting on threes power fist gives you that minus one hit though that's what i'm saying yeah because so you're normally hitting on, hitting on twos hitting on threes, and you're hitting on threes ones. yeah I, I strength I times like the two. Power sword. Because the thing with the power fist, you don't attack last They're, that doesn't exist anymore so it's just it's a little bit harder to hit because it's slower I still right. like the sword just for the minus three. To say the minus three isn't bad, but it's harder to wound. True. Right. Yeah. So it's power fists have become better. A lot. You're gonna see a lot more power fists on characters now. Yeah. Where before you kind of you didn't do it. You throw it on your surge on the off chance. On the off chance he's still alive. Made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. So now that you know you're gonna be hitting first. Yeah. Especially if if you're gonna do it, do it on a chaos lord because he hits on threes now. Instead of twos. Threes rolling ones, yeah. Whereas if it's true. another dude, he'd be hitting on fours instead of threes. And so it, the chances of you hitting is just that much better, especially if you're re rolling the ones. Mm -hmm. So I would do it. All the power weapons are more viable now, it seems. Like before the mace, nobody took a power mace. No, it, no, power no, no, no. Ball. it was terrible. Yeah, it was. It was. Uh, never. But now it's pretty good. I think it's strength plus two strength minus one your save. Yep, yeah, that sounds right. That sounds right. Um, but I know that it is better because it still does something to armor. Right. Right. Whereas before it was like, eh, it hardly does anything. It does something against a gaunt, but who cares? Exactly. You're going to kill the gaunt anyway. And then there's going to be a million more. So it doesn't matter. But yeah, power weapons on lords are much better now. Sigil of Corruption on the Chaos Lord and Terminator Arm, so you're four up in mold safe. And Teleport Strike, which is the same as a jump pack in terms of uh, assaulting, uh, moving at the end of the movement phase there. Death to the False Emperor once again. So that's a question. If you had to choose between a, a, a Power Armor Jump Pack Lord versus a Terminator Lord, which would you choose, knowing that you get the combi weapon and the power weapon? Not that that matters, because you can just for, for switch power it stuff. out. For, yeah, for, for my level. chosen play style, I think I'd much rather the Chaos Lord with the Jump Pack. Okay. He's Why's a that? little bit less resilient, but he's a lot faster. He is So faster. I can get him to where I need him to be on the battlefield. Yep. So he's got less wounds, and but he moves quicker. And the saves a little less. Right. Yeah. I can get him into the fight easier. I can react to stuff easier. Yeah. I, I think that having high movement is going to be really important in 8th edition. Yeah. So I'm, I'm leaning towards the high movement. But I think that leads us into the next one. I think so. Which would be my choice, almost always. Okay, so the next one is Chaos Lord on bike. You like the bikes, huh? Yeah. The bikes are so good. <laughs> okay, 14-inch movement, first off. 
which is a big deal. Okay, it makes it that much better than a jump pack. And uh, in addition to that, you you get turbo boost, which means that you can move six inches when you advance instead of just rolling a dice. Mm -hmm. So you're like an automatic six inches. So you're you're 20 inches across the board if you want to be in a turn. Right. Which is a big deal. So that's the big difference right there. Uh, toughness five. Tougher to wound them. You are toughness five, and you do have six wounds instead of five. So that's also a, a thing to mention. Now, that's only a difference of one power level between a Chaos Lord of the Jump Pack or a Chaos Lord on Bike. Now, you don't have the Jump Pack Assault, but... Does, you move 20 inches, who does, cares? Does it matter? <laughs> who cares? Does it matter too much? I don't think it would matter that much. I mean, if you're going for that first turn charge and setting up, like the, the, jump, pack, the jump pack lord can still definitely have uh, his place. Yeah. I don't think this completely invalidates him, but I'd lean a little bit more towards the bike. I tend to agree, and here's yep. why. Because with that jump pack assault, to get that first turn charge, how far do you need? 10 inches? You need a 10, don't you? Because if you roll, you're gonna be nine, slightly more than nine away. Yeah. So that's why you need a ten. Yeah. Yeah. So the chances of you getting ten inches on your first. Well, turn, no, because you get end up within an inch. So you need to roll a nine. No, but you have to be more. Yeah. More than nine inches. So away. you're nine point one inches away, and you have to end your charge within an inch to complete your charge. So you need okay, to so it out. is a nine. It is a nine. Okay. So, even still, getting a nine, that's not, the most. I mean, the chances of that failing is pretty high. So I don't know if I necessarily want that over a bike that can just, the rest of the game, move really far and consistently. Well, and the, the you bike... You get more wounds and your higher toughness. Right, even having the bike as a support character, you know, throw a combi flamer on him now because when you use your combi weapons, it they don't run out. What would you want to equip him with close combat-wise? Close combat-wise, I don't even know if I'd care that much. It, 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 again, depends on the rest of my list. I see me taking a Chaos Lord on bike, giving him a Kami Flamer, and just having him run around in the flanks. Because he's tough to kill, yeah. but he's going to zip into uh, maybe a Power Sword or something like that. It doesn't need to be super killy, because he's going to go hunt down backline support units like nobody's business. Yep. Yeah, absolutely. 28-inch threat with that Kami Flamer. Yeah. Because he moves 20 and then 8-inch range on the Flamer. I think it's hilarious. That is because it's an assault weapon, so you hilarious. can after you advance, you can still shoot it. That's true. Yeah, yeah. So any kind of flamers or commie flamers on bikes for me is just win, win, win. I see how your mind works, Josh. Yeah, yeah. I, I see that. That's that's pretty sneaky. Not gonna lie. So uh, looking at these other options here, cast lord on juggernaut. I for in the other edition, I never really chose these options. They were never good enough. Steed of Slanesh now, he's power level 6. Uh, he actually isn't too bad because of his unholy speed. You can advance and charge with him in the same turn. So moving 12 inches and then advancing and then charging, that's a big deal. It helps, but he's going to be, so for that chosen role of going into combat, he's going to have other units that do the same sort of thing. Yeah, so they can support him. Right. Uh, which, if you're doing a Slanesh themed army, the chances of you having multiple units in combat, them getting more attacks, especially if you're fighting against the units of the Imperium, it's good. We'll, we'll put it this way, okay, so if you're playing that Slanesh list, and what, what units are you going to have jumping in to support him? Probably, Probably, I'm thinking Terminators. The Terminators are slow compared to him. Yeah, but it, they have their Deep Strike Assault. Right, but then again, you don't know if you're going to make the charge. It's, it's all or nothing. I'm not saying it's on a viable tactic, so what would you bring but I like then? guaranteed stuff. What would you bring? Because I'm thinking of the... Uh, they're, they're tough. To support they stuff more wounds. With, with that I think it's close combat and support. Right, so I'm thinking like Warp Talons or something, maybe. Yeah. But then if I'm going that route... Probably go Raptors. Either, either one. Yeah. Jump... Uh, so you're thinking jump units. Right, but then why not just take a guy with a jump back? Why don't you? What, what, what would be the difference? You can't, you can't advance and, and charge in the same turn, though. That's the problem. Right, but he can't uh, do the deep strike with them. But does he need to if he's advancing and charging? Because the deep strike helps you once, the advance and charging helps you for the rest of the game. For the rest of the game. But again, if I want that fast unit to go around to respond to threats, it's probably just going to be bikes. But not if you're playing a Slanesh-themed army. You can have Slanesh bikes. Uh, yeah. 
And you, he, he looked cool with the Steed of Slanesh, but again, why, why not just run a Slanesh bike? Or Actually, that's a good question. If you had to choose between a bike, well, I know the answer, but if like, yep. let's take a look at the numbers here, okay? So with a, a bike or a Steed of Slanesh, okay? With movement, you're 14 inches movement on the mm -hmm. bike, 12 on the Steed. Right. Okay. But you can advance and charge with the Steed. You can't do that with the bike. Which... In my mind, the, the versatility of that is offset by the fact that uh, the bike is good to Toughness 5. That is true, although the Steed also has six wounds. They both have six wounds, but I mean, it's and still what tougher does, to wound the biker. Does that, what, what does that matter so much if you're attacking first when you're charging, right? It depends on what I'm you're I'm not charging. saying I'm charging. That, that, I go back to the, the biker lord I'm thinking of. He's, he's not going to do that much charging. Well, he wouldn't. He's going to go around setting he? stuff on fire. I well, think the he's steed... more shoehorned into being charging the combat. Absolutely, that's where he's more useful. So it's they're different uses, so they can't be they, compared. Then, well, not, not in the same not way. Super direct. Because we're we're comparing charging into combat right, right. now. Well, right. Well, I think you're still your mind is still going to this is going to be your your hammer unit of going in and destroying stuff. I'm in the mindset of taking these guys as support characters to be like, hey, look, there's Tau hiding in the back with marker lights. Well, now you're speaking my language. 20, okay, so, from 28 yeah. inches away, I'm going to drive up to you and shoot you with a flamer. Yes. Thanks for showing up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or, or better yet, when you deep strike or when you jump pack assault, then you can, you can shoot them for one, right. and you can possibly charge them, which is awesome. Right. Because then that takes care of the tap. Yeah, so I mean, it, it comes down to your, your chosen role for this. I go back to if it's going to be my really kind of killy character that I'm sending in, he's probably just going to be a demon prince anyways. Well, a demon prince with wings. Well, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of a given. Yeah. Especially if you're playing power level, and then you can just put wings on them and not pay for them. Which leads us into... Which leads us into the demon prince. Okay, so let's talk about the demon prince right now. So he moves 8 inches without wings. If he's got wings, he moves 12. Why would you ever... And he gains the fly keyword. So why would you ever not put wings on a demon prince? In a power rating game, there I don't think there's a reason not to. Even in a points game. I, I yeah. Right. Yeah. He, it depends how many upgrade, how many points it costs to give him wings. But like build him first. You probably gonna and yeah. And then like build your army around him, right? Right. And especially since he has the fly keyword, then he can attach other flyer units, or he can attack other flyer yep. units. So it just makes him that much more versatile. Much much better. So he's got eight wounds. Which is awesome because he can't be targeted because he doesn't have 10 wounds or more, right? So he unless be, he's the closest. Unless he's the closest. Yeah. It lets right? him hide close to units. Yeah. He can hide behind just a, a wall of guys and then pop out and kill stuff, which is nice. Now, he's got a warp bolter. That's a brand new thing. Demon princes don't have shooting attacks, typically, uh, unless they're psychic. But like this is an actual bolter that he has. Which is funny because that brings it back to 3rd edition, the old 3rd edition Demon Prince had a bolt weapon. Okay. He had a big giant bolter like this. That's sweet. I find hilarious that they brought it back. The model doesn't exist anymore, but he had it built into his uh, one fist, I think. Well, there's a lot of conversion uh, options here. Just go get the old one. Yeah, you could do that, or you can just like fix his hand so he has it. Mm -hmm. Either way. It's a 24 inch assault 2, which is uh, nice, uh, because you can uh, advance, advance and, still shoot. and then shoot. Yeah, which is uh, pretty cool. Uh, damage 2 to his bolter. Strength 4, AP minus 1, and then damage 2. So it's, it does I a like it. little bit more damage than the average, which is nice. And you're hitting on 2s as well. And in addition to that, you're rerolling your 1s because you're a Prince of Chaos. And that Prince of Chaos allows you to reroll hits of 1 made for uh, your specific legion, and you are your own legion, so you just reroll. You have a 5-up inbound save on him, which, uh, I mean, it's not bad. I think a 5-up's plenty good. I think a 4-up is better. Well, it is, but... Sigil is better, and you put that on Lords, but a Demon Prince does not have it, so that doesn't change from the old edition. You're still the same. You if if he had a 4-up, he'd be too good. Would he be too good? He would. He'd have to be, like, 11 or 12 power or something. He'd have to go up in power rating. Well, if that's the case, then that's fine. I think he's fine where he is. I think that if he had a better invuln save, and he was more power, then that'd be okay. Because then... He'd be brought more. Having the option could be cool, maybe, but but then then you're getting into options that that increase your power, with, which is more than just what they've done, which is basically uh, jump packs. Other than that, I haven't found that they've added too much option that costs more power, but that's fine. He's got the death to the false emperor special rule, demonic allegiance, 
uh, which is the keyword special thing. You just need to make sure that you're putting them in an army with the, with the same keyword. Prince of Chaos, we already got over. And then Might Over Magic. He increases his attacks characteristic by one if he has the corn keyword. So he is attacks of four, which bring him to five if he's corn. If he is a Psyker, then a Demon Prince of Zinch, Nurgle, or Slanesh, he can manifest one Psychic Power each friendly phase and attempt to deny one each phase. And he knows the, uh, the Smite and one power from the Dark Hereticus Discipline. So he knows up to two Psychic Abilities there. And what would I char What would I choose for him? Oh, warp time. <laughs> warp time. Yeah, probably warp time. Yeah. So extra good. movement, so that he's getting up into combat. Because this is close combat stuff. He has the demonic axe, which is strength plus one, which brings it to eight because he's base strength seven. Uh, AP is minus three and damage three. And then uh, when subtracting or when attacking with this weapon, you must subtract one from the hit roll. So. Okay, I guess I'm hitting on threes there instead of twos. Hitting on threes, rolling ones. It's still not bad. Not too bad. Not too bad, I suppose. A Hellforged Sword is a strength user, so strength seven it is a AP minus two and then damage three. Okay, so you are sacrificing another AP and a, and a strength in order to get a more reliable damage three uh, close combat weapon, which, depending on what you're attacking, more reliable on your hits, but less reliable on wounding, depending what you're hitting. That's right. Yeah, but I mean, your strength. Here's the thing, right? Because demonic axe is strength plus one. If you're if you're attacking marines, then you're wounding on twos. I'm thinking like uh, killing vehicles and stuff like that. There's that you know, as well. You're, you're facing off against vehicles that are toughness seven toughness or toughness seven. eight. Yeah. So you're wanting to beat up on Lehman Russes. Well, wounding on four is a lot better than wounding on five. Yeah, exactly. And it's good that it gives you the option too, which I like. In Malefic Talons, uh, you could uh, do this. You could uh, you could replace his Hellforged Sword with a Demonic Axe or a second set of Malefic Talons. So he comes with a set of Malefic Talons, it looks like. Each time model fights, it can make an additional attack with this weapon. A model armed with two sets of Malefic Talons can make three additional attacks with them instead. Okay, a Strength User, AP-2, and Damage-2. So, not They're too bad. They're all solid options. Yeah, not too, too bad. So it looks like you come with a Hellforged Sword and Malefic Talons. That's what you come with. And you can take an additional talon if you replace your sword, or you can uh, take an axe by replacing your sword. So you don't have both. You don't have the axe and the sword. You have yeah, you can't one. do axe sword, but you can do either of those with a set of talons, or you can just do double talons. Yeah. Not too bad. I... I think that we'll see more Demon Princes. I think that he's pretty sweet. I would bring him. Mm -hmm. I have brought him. He uh, didn't do as well as I had hoped when I did bring him. It was all experimental. And that game's, had, that game's been posted. Did Matt just trick you into throwing him away, though? Into throwing me away? Into throwing the well, Demon Well, he Prince cheated away? in that game, so he doesn't really <laughs> count. So, yeah. His uh, heavy Venom cannons on his warriors were not a legal option, so um, mm. we're going to have to have a rematch at some point in the future, which is fine. That's okay. Sorcerers. It's important to talk about sorcerers because uh, now that they are... There's only a slight difference between a sorcerer and a lord, and those differences are weapon skill plus a skill. Instead of on a lord being 2 plus for both, it's 3 plus on a sorcerer, and the... The wounds. wounds are different, yeah. The wounds are different. You get one less wound everywhere. You get one less wound. Now, the power level defaults to a little bit higher. Instead of a 5, it is a 7. Ooh, yeah. So there's a couple power difference there, but you... Uh, the same as before, you can gain a jump pack assault if you uh, add a jump pack on him for an extra one, so he'd be an 8 at that point. So either way, he'd be 2 plus more if you put a jump pack on your Chaos Lord. And then he is a Psyker. So with the Psyker... This is actually kind of a big deal because I would disputably say that a sorcerer is better in all cases than a chaos lord, with the exception of corn, because you can't be a sorcerer in corn. But <clears throat> because if you put warp time on yourself, it just warp time. Well, that was the yeah we talked a little bit about the sorcerer on bike and the hilarity of that. Because yeah, so you're you're a bike. Again, you're a bike, and then you put warp time on yourself, so then you're moving 20... 28. 8. 
Essentially, because you get a second move, right? Because you get a second move, yeah. So that is uh, that's kind of ridiculous. <laughs> Actually, yeah, you move 28. And then still able to charge, because you could do the advance. <laughs> that's a statement. Yeah, you could move uh, 34 inches and then have an 8-inch range <laughs> in the flame. So, I mean, yeah, I mean... Did, did you just you find be, a way you gotta be to be careful with that? Because it's you? a lot of well, it's a lot of power to throw away. And he's, it did, are you he's, throwing away power at that well, point? Well, it's easier to well just to shoot a flamer or something probably. Well, don't just shoot a flamer. You got to be careful with them, but it's, it's make the him a close combat beast to do that late game. Well, to do that, do that late any game. game. Do well, any part of the game. No, because if you do that first, then you're just gonna get killed. Will you? If somebody you put that, it behind enemy lines, does, where nothing can shoot you. Maybe behind, they just shoot behind them. Well, don't go behind him. Well, I'm just saying, first turn, first couple turns, you got to be careful. But once everything is kind of stuck in and they're dealing with the rest of your army, that hilarious little support character zipping around, grabbing objectives. That's where you warp time something else, then. Right. Yeah. Warp time seems to be awesome. So There's a lot of capability, because, again, my belief currently is that movement's really important for this game. Oh, right absolutely. Now. Yeah, because it's a close combat rewarding game now, uh, even more so than the last edition. So the fact that you can do an extra movement and get that much closer to close combat is just amazing. Or get yourself into range to smite stuff. There's, there's, <laughs> this is kind of scary. There's, there's, there's a lot yeah. of funny little capability here. The Sorcerer on Bike is... Now you're 8. You're par level 8. So it's point. only one more than the Lord on Bike. Right? Was it 7? Uh, no, I think you're... It was 7. Ah, uh, no. Okay. It's seven. Hmm. I was looking at the palaquin. So <laughs> you're right, Josh. You're, you're absolutely correct. So it is only one more. Now, why is it only one more? I don't know. I don't know what the, the thought process is there to offset that. Because, yeah, the basic one's two more. Yes. Hmm. Right. Eh. 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 So I guess that's fine. Uh, oh, hold on, hold on. <laughs> Where is it? What did you find? Okay. Here's another one. Okay. Sorcerer on Steed of Slanesh. Because you can unholy speed, you can advance and charge in the same turn. So. Yeah. Again, then you can warp go, time yourself. going to beat up those funny little support units. So that, that could be fun. Okay. Now let's talk about that. Sorcerer on Steed of Slanesh <laughs> with warp time versus the Sorcerer on Bike with warp time. Uh, I'm still not entirely convinced I'd use the Sorcerer over the Chaos Lord. <laughs> Why not? Uh, the Chaos Lord's a little bit tougher. He's a little bit more of a pain to remove. Because, again, if I'm doing that support character thing, I want him to be a thorn in your side and not easy for you to remove. I want you to have to, you know, make choices of how much firepower you're going to dedicate to where you're trying to kill him. Mm-hmm. You can do the same thing for the, the Sorcerer. There, there's a whole extra wound to deal with here. An extra wound? An extra wound's a big deal! You won't be able sure. to fire at him if he's so far away because he's warp timing himself. Yeah. So, and you're, you're talking other about, units. You're talking about charging and all that. You got to get close to charge. I'm thinking of charging, even in the psychicness of this. I'm thinking of charging psychers, which is almost be blasphemy. But that's how I think. I think close combat because I want to get into close combat because I'm at the heart of everything. I'm corn. Well, that's, so that's how I think about it all, right? That's true, actually, though. Too the way close combat works now, tying up things that aren't going to kill you. <laughs> so he's going to go play tag with a Lehman Russell game. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You're it. That's right. And the Russ is going to try to hit him on sixes in close combat? Yeah. Or it's going to drive away and not be able to shoot him? That's right. So that's actually a you've really good strategy. You've, you've got to deal with the rest of the army, but just to mitigate the shooting of one And you protect unit. yourself, too. Right. You protect yourself. Because are you going to take out a Lehman Russ in one round? Probably not. Well, no, you're not going to take it out. But yeah, or if somebody has that you know scary flanking unit of whatever, mm -hmm. unless it can fly, then you're just going to get shot. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. Crunch the suits that doesn't work against. But there's certain things that that could be funny against. Mm -hmm. Okay, I dig it. Lots of good I options, though. Lots of good options. So this is the end of the first part of the review video. For the second part, if you're a Vault member, click on that link below to watch the uh, next portion of it. It's going to be long and meaty and good. We're going to be talking about Chaos Space Marines, Corn Berserkers. We'll talk about uh, Magnus. We're going to talk about just more units. We're going to go. We're just going to go through the rest of the it, stuff like, that we missed. Much as we can because there's so much in here and there, there's I mean my guess is that there's going to be more in the future yep. there's got to be because we can't barely we're just barely scratching the surface here but we're getting all the good nitty gritties of 
even just starting the army, right? Like which HQ? This is all the first video has been. It's just what what HQ should we choose? Right. So let's start talking about fleshing out the army with different units. So make sure to click on the link below as watch as watching as well as watching all the uh, battle reports associated with this faction focus of Chaos Space Marines or Heretic Astartes. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video. Happy working.